<clears throat> just a little correction, former head of SEO. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, right now, I'm sitting in my uh, little uh, bedroom in Dagnam. Not nice area, but and, uh, I'm just doing SEO from my bedroom. And today, I have a pleasure and honor to be in front of you for fifth time uh, in Manchester. And I wanted to share with you some tactics that you can take home and implement tonight or tomorrow or afternoon into your business, into your agency, into the strategy of your clients you're working with. So, because I didn't know that I have 20 minutes and I prepared 77 slides. So, <laughs> get ready. Um, so, the first tactic I'm using is a snapshot. Snapshot is like one of my uh, pillar when I'm doing an audit for a customer. And uh, what Snapshot is in the nutshell, it is like I'm trying to identify as much of the keywords that already are ranking and corresponding URLs and how can I push these things up. Um, so everyone knows Search Console. Some of you may know also Data Studio. And I'm not using Search Console anymore natively. I'm always connecting Search Console to Data Studio. Why? Because through API, I have much, much deeper view, much more data. And here is an example. I'm just connecting my little website, zelezny.uk, um, uh, through Search Console and Data Studio. Then, obviously, I need to give permission. Data Studio is asking uh, Search Console if, if I'm all right. Absolutely. And uh, I can start juggling with lots of lots of data. If you will go after this presentation or, or at night uh, to Search Console, you will frequently see that the maximum rows you can export from Search Console is 999. And very often, this is only a fraction of keywords that delivering traffic uh, or impressions. Uh, if you go through um, Data Studio, you will see 5, 10, 20,000, depends you know, how, many, uh, how, how powerful computer you have, uh, then you can start processing that file. And I'm just creating a simple Data Studio, just one table, and I have all the queries, landing pages corresponding with queries, impressions, clicks, and click-through rate, so the metrics we know from, uh, from normal classic Search Console. And that's all I need, because then the snapshot table is ready. And then I'm doing something uh, which is a tricky sort, I call this. What is tricky sort? Tricky sort is that I'm sorting twice this data. First, I'm sorting by landing page. And then immediately, I'm sorting by either I'm impressions or, click, or, or clicks. If there is very little traffic to the website, it's better to sort this by impressions and use impressions are kind of guideline. If there is enough traffic, you can go with clicks. And why I'm doing this? Because I want to group. I want to group keywords and corresponding URLs. And now um, I prepared this lovely uh, anime GIF. It took me three hours. But it's, you can see how nicely it's sorted. In this column, you have impressions, and they will be always going down to zero. And when they will hit zero, new URL will uh, appear there, and it's going to zero, and then new URL, and new URL, and new URL. And then I'm doing something like, I'm saying, OK, right now, when I have this, I only want up to five keywords per URL, or 10 keywords. I'm not going with 300 keywords per one URL and 200 keywords per second URL, because I will never be able to start optimizing one landing page for 300 keywords. I'm only using the creme de la creme, the five best performing in terms of impressions or in terms of clicks. And <clears throat> the holy grail of Excel, pivot tables. I love them with passion. Um, and you can see that when I'm thinking about the SEO, I'm not thinking about keywords. I'm thinking about landing pages in the first place. And I have this pivot here. And first of uh, this is a very interesting article, find the SEO clients. And I have uh, some traffic from keywords like how to get the SEO clients without cold calling or how to find the SEO clients. I wrote a guide, and this guide is ranking somewhere in Google. I'm getting some clicks. And you can see that maybe clicks are not uh, that, that, that crazy high, but there is a good beginning. And I can see that how to get SEO clients without cold calling, despite from the fact it's extremely long phrase, lots of people is using, and the click to rate is 7.34. I can also see in this pivot that I have aggregation of uh, that that specific uh, URL based on this specific five keywords is having 5,200 impressions, 51 clicks, and average click to rate is 1.59. And I can start prioritizing, and I can say to myself, OK, every day I will be optimizing 10 pages, Monday 10, Tuesday 10. 
After a week, I have 50 pages optimized. After a month, I have 40. And after a year, God knows how many. And, uh, and you know, like, there is absolutely no chance that you will not get extra traffic. And here is another example, a snapshot method, a bit of inception. We're just talking about this SEO snapshot method, SEO snapshot. You can see I have nine clicks, 363. When I was doing this, um, uh, this data, it was some time ago, so the website was relatively new. Probably right now I would have a bit more. And why I'm doing this and how I can implement this and what is the outcome? I wanted to share with you an example I wanted to be fully transparent. There is a website which is called socialmedia.pl. I was born in Poland, as you can hear in my accent, um, but uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying my best. And, uh, you know, socialmedia.pl uh, is a very, very cool domain, I believe. Um, I haven't told my wife for three months that I bought this because it cost me a bit, but I implemented during that time uh, these strategies, and I was thinking, like, when I will show her charts, then she won't kill me. So. You know, we're talking about Polish market, and obviously I can use SEMrush, I can use search metrics, I can use other tools, but uh, uh, local markets very often have local tools. One of the local tools uh, that is for Polish market is called Senuto. It's kind of like SEMrush or search metrics or Systrix, but only for Polish market. They're expanding right now, but they have like a relatively big database of keywords there. And take a look, the, the blue line, is a um, number of keywords that have been ranking on social media PL, and the orange line is my competitor. And you can see here was an acquisition when I was trying, when I was thinking how I will tell my wife. Then it's content marketing. It was doing good, doing quite all right. And then finally, snapshot. And you will say, like, yeah, but this is number of keywords that is ranking in top 10. Uh, can you show us the traffic? No problem. I'm trying to be transparent. So this is organic traffic. You can see that right now I have a monthly around 10,000. Maybe not a crazy amount because this is just a block, but this is 10,000 of visits I may have and or my, I may not have. So I'm getting some leads from this and it's working quite well. And you have see, you can also see the same kind of areas, uh, acquisition, content marketing, and snapshot. So as a conclusion, uh, use keywords that are already ranking quite well. Um, this is strategy for not, not for a new website. It's strategy for established website, for website with a bit of history, ideally if you have 12 months of the history. You're leveraging quality traffic because you, you're looking, hey Google, show me where I'm ranking already and I will get this and try to push this by bulk up. Even if you will push 100 keywords by one position, when they've been in top 10 obviously, the, the impact on traffic is tremendous. And you're playing Google game. The tactic two, keyword magic tools. Who is using SEMrush? Raise your hand. Wow, great. Uh, so um, I love key keyword magic tool. And uh, before I will go into details, I wanted to go through this. Keywords by intent. Probably all of you saw that pyramids and you know awareness, interest, consideration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for me, it's like you know what this green part. This is where I am, and this is probably later when there is a retention and advocate. Uh, so I'm not slicing this that deep often. And then I was uh, watching Simon Sinek uh, presentation. Who knows Simon Sinek? Raise your hand. Great. And Simon Sinek have this presentation, and he's saying. Um, start with why, Simon Sinek Golden Circle. And this is when you're thinking about establishing a company. So you're not uh, thinking about what, how, the why is the core. Why are you creating this company? Why you would like to, have, why you would like to uh, sort a, a, a problem? It's a bit of a philosophical question. Now, this is when you're establishing a company. But if you're trying to put yourself into shoes of a customer, then the circle, it looks completely different. I would never call this Lucas Zelezny golden circle, but I call this SEO search volume golden circle. So that looks this way. And now, why is here, what is here, and how is here, but the size of the circle represent uh, a potential, the number of search, the demand. And I was intentionally knowing that how is the sweet spot of every strategy, most of the strategies that I was implementing in recent years. But again, I know that someone would be able to stand up right now and say, objection, you have no data to prove. And I was thinking, how can I prove it? So start from how, and I took two websites that, in my opinion, have absolutely phenomenal content marketing. First website is a HubSpot. 
And when I analyzed uh, one million, over one million keywords in this data set, 149,000, so way over 10% been keywords with word how. And this is not a coincidence. They targeting these keywords because it's high click-through rate, because uh, uh, there is demand, because when people are uh, typing a uh, question with how they very likely will not get answered through the, through the meta description, it's much more than that, so they need to click. And I was like, okay, so I know one. Any other example, Shopify. Another website which have absolutely amazing content uh, marketing, and surprisingly, they also rank in uh, uh, in SEM Rush because I took this data from SEM Rush in around one million keyword ish, and ninety thousand, so close to ten percent, is with how, and then way way behind that what, and then finally at the end is why. It's very rare that people are typing why they, when they have a problem. Uh, so the customers are rarely using why. The entrepreneurs, when they established a business, they need to start from why. But customer frequently start from how. And I'm billing you out, and, uh, and I can check in Polish language, it's also uh, the, the how equivalent is that popular. So knowing that, I can go to Keyword Magic Tool, and I can, for example, type a keyword, organize conference, and I can start going into this, which uh, is... Whoa, uh, I was thinking that this is a laser, it's not. Uh, so there is a question and all, yeah? You're going into the question and you can see lots of questions. So uh, SEMrush um, intelligently is splitting keywords from non-question and questions. And how to organize conference? 90 searches, 71 keyword difficulty, not bad. Going deeper, London, and you can also go with the keywords which contain word London and some words that indicates that this is a question. Um, I was thinking like, okay, we have search one, we have keyword difficulty, is there any keyword that is extremely popular and nobody, nobody cares about this keyword, no one wants to rank? And I found, you know what is this? How to cook broccoli. So if you would like to start a website that will have quickly very, uh, lots of traffic and you don't want to spend any money and don't put any efforts, build a website about broccoli. I don't know how you will monetize this, but that's another story. And then, you know, I was thinking also, like, my, um, my background is uh, um, working in price comparison. I was working in Uswitch. And, you know, if someone would come to me and say, like, Lucas, you know what? I want to start a price comparison website. I would be like, in England, in, in Britain, yeah, from scratch, yeah, are you crazy? I was like, no, 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 do me a keyword research. Okay. So I was like, all right. So let's say this guy is going into credit cards. It's super competitive, but we could go through Keyword Magic Tool and say, like, okay, maybe I can find some keywords that have relatively high search volume and relatively low keyword difficulty. And here is, like, can you get cash back with credit card? How to pay off credit card? So we wouldn't go immediately into balance transfer credit cards or credit cards or like best credit cards, no chance to rank there. There is use which compare the market, money supermarket, go compare, money co UK, and I could like go, and this is only the first results, yeah? There is also a second page, third, and so on and so on. But if we would go with these questions, we would potentially have a tiny chance to succeed. Can you pay taxes with credit card? I don't know, but you know, we could write an article. So keyword magic tool, questions, and start from how. Then finally, uh, tactic three, uh, brand, uh, brand mentions and links. And let me do one thing. My name is Lukas Zelezny, Polish name, Czech surname, living in Britain, what could go wrong? Zelensky, uh, Zeleny, Zelesnysz. Everyone was spelling my name wrong. Even in Poland, they were spelling this wrong, yeah? Uh, so I was like, you know what? It's time to do something with this. And no one could learn that it's very simple. It's like Łukasz Grzegorz Żelezny, and this is the pronunciation. So, you know, like, <laughs> simple, yeah? And I was like, enough. In 2007, I had this idea. I will change my name and surname, and I will be like very unique uh, name and very common surname. And I wanted to go with Archibald Smith. <laughs> but then I realized that actually Archie was alive in 19th century, and he's still first with his Wikipedia page. So not bad SEO as for someone who is dead for 100 years. I can see some similarities here, but you know. Um, 
So I was like, no. And then I realized that, oh my gosh, it's a blessing when you have a crazy name and surname. Then there probably is not other guys who have crazy name and surname. And you can put at least your name and surname into brand tracker. So let's see what people are writing about you. And uh, I went into some research. And I went into what is available on the market. Talkwalker, Brand24, Fresh Web Explorer, and Google Ads. That never works. Uh, but uh, I couldn't afford Talkwalker. Uh, so yeah. Where is the camera? I couldn't afford Talkwalker. I will send this later. And the Brand24 is really affordable and is very, very powerful. And I was like, OK, let's do some tests. So um, as a keyword, I set up my name with, uh, with space, without space, with some typo mistakes, and so on and so on. And what I could see that Brand24 started aggregating tweets, Facebook messages that been pub uh, that been published uh, uh, for for open public, blogs, new, uh, news, and so on and so on. And take a look. I had in a, in, a, in, a, in a one month something like 50 to mention, and the reach was uh, 73,000. And I was like, oh my gosh, so that's great. What can, what can I do with this? So then I created another project, which was for U-Switch. And then I started thinking, what can I do for this uh, with this? Because it's not only like, oh, great, 52 mentions. Wow, super cool, cigarette. No, it's not like that. You need to do something, yeah? So I was like, link building. I can do a link building. So whenever I saw you, sweet, you sweet .com or Luka Zelezny, I was approaching these people and saying, like, listen, thank you very much for mentioning me. Uh, that's very kind, but uh, you know, any chance that this, this, this brand could be a link to our website, most of the people will be absolutely fine to do this. So this is one of the most effective link building, organic link building tactic I'm using. And one day I was like that, because what I saw, it really shocked me. I saw this, and I was like, what's going on here? What is this language? Um, and then I realized that that must be Russian. I speak Russian, but I don't read Russian. You probably know why. I'm more, I have a, like neighbors who are Russians. I'm more fluent on weekends when they sometimes inviting me for barbecue. So the, the, there, is like a, <laughs> there is like a correlation between the amount of alcohol you have and how fluent you are. <laughs> At the end of the night, I'm completely fluid. But anyway, um, you can see that this is in Russian. And then here is Lukas Zelezny. And that was written in Latin alphabet. So Brandt went for catch this. And here is actually the link. But this link was pointing to LinkedIn. And you know, linked, LinkedIn, what a pun. Uh, then, you know, like, uh, I was like, you know, LinkedIn probably have enough links. Maybe, guys, you can, you can repoint that link to my website? They've been like, no problem. So what they did, they took my article without asking me, translated, posted this, put my photo, and linked to my LinkedIn. I was like, almost perfect. If you would link to my website, I would be 100% happy. And they've been like, no problem. And then I was thinking like, OK, so I can start using this tactic also to build links. And that's next, uh, next uh, part of the presentation. Very quickly, the links and social profiles. Very often you have a companies like, um, let's say, like, like even like you switch for example, Compile the Market, Money Supermarket, uh, Zoopla, Rightmove, they have uh, social profiles, Twitter, Facebook. And very often, somehow, other websites, instead of linking to your website, they're linking to your social profiles. So this is my other baby, SEO.London, uh, another domain I didn't thought my wife I'm going to buy. And then later, when I build the website, I thought. And then I had no links. And I was like, hold on, how my LinkedIn look like? And I went to my LinkedIn, and I found that there is lots of links from other websites pointing to this page. Again, nice, but I will not be serving as a free link builder to LinkedIn. And I would rather like these links to point to my website. So my idea was to repoint backlinks from my LinkedIn profile to my SEO.London website. And when I went to Majestic and I put an URL of my LinkedIn profile, I saw that there is 20 domains and 141 links. I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a, like a, like a, like a Klondike. I can like dig and dig and dig into that. And you know, sometimes I have like a night, I have a cup of coffee, and I'm just sending emails to everybody and saying like, hey, could you repoint that link? Could you repoint that link? So much fun. And you know, <laughs> here is like referring domains. So, uh, so you can see that uh, that's a domains which been pointing before to my, uh, to my uh, LinkedIn, including, for example, my own website. So I sent myself email, and then I replied. <laughs> and uh, you know, you have here like, uh, like this one, Remoters. This is a website owned by Aleida Solis. I think she was also here once a speaker. And, and I saw that, OK, uh, 
here was a LinkedIn, and I asked her if she could add word website, so she added website and she linked to my website. Then another one is Accuranker. Again, he was Lukas Zelezny, that was before, so I had this Zelezny UK, I approached them and say like, listen, I have the now new website, SEO.London, maybe you can change the Zelezny UK to be SEO.London. And then you see how the links started going up. This is very early stage. I had 11 domains. If you would put SEO.London to Majestic right now, there is 100 domains and about 30,000 backlinks. So I was, I just get addicted and I went into my Facebook. I saw that there is also a couple of links that I can repoint. And then finally I went to my Twitter and I almost get a heart attack. 164 domains. Oh my gosh, I just locked myself in the room. I said to my wife, don't talk to me for next week. I will be repointing domains. 37,000 domains, yeah? Again, like not every, you will not get a 100% success ratio, but you will get there, and uh, even if you will repoint 20% or 30%, that's valuable. So again, like, and went for another profile, and so on and so on. And what, then as a summary, how it works well, you mostly know the social media profile owners. So it's not like you're approaching completely people out of blue. You probably know because they were doing a webinar with you, or they were doing a webinar with your brand, or they were somehow connected to your brand because of some reasons. Um, it's easy to switch because you're just approaching and he just needs to change like a little piece of code. It's not like you're approaching someone you never heard about before and it's like, hey, could you link to me? And it's kind of organic, kind of. Um, you can save a lot of time, yeah? So please, please try this. Then the last one, I think, uh, or almost the last one, is a merge. A very simple tactic, and again, like an anecdote. Uh, merge, merge subdomains into subfolders. So I had a client who is, uh, who is actually from uh, not, not, not far away from, from Manchester. And uh, he had a situation that there was, a, he came to me and uh, there was a situation, I don't know, did of the website, that he have a blog on subdomain. And I said like, listen, we should move that blog from subdomain into subfolder. Uh, and he was like, why? Because I was like, because your blog, I have so many backlinks at the moment. You have such an interesting articles, but Google somehow is treating these as sep separate in uh, instances. So um, he was like, and you think it will help? I was like, yeah, and it's not simply like you move a couple of thousand visits from subdomain to your subfolder, there will be kind of a synergy. And then he was like, you know what? No, we will do something else. We will move everything into root folder. I was like, whoa. Okay, uh, so he wanted to move all the articles to the root folder. There will be no slash blog slash, nothing like that. Everything is going to the root folder. So we did this. We moved, and then we just couldn't, he just had to turn off PPC, literally, because he couldn't process the, the, the amount of leads. So you can see where we started and how it started boosting. And knowing that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have another client who have a forum, and the forum was on subdomain, and that was like very old uh, job, uh, job, uh, job offer portal. And we were doing everything. This website was so well optimized, and it still didn't give him traffic he had a couple of years ago. And I was like, listen, we will move subdomain into subfolder. You have a forum there. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not interested. I was like, listen, trust me. And then take a look. He boosted immediately, then it little fall down, but it never get back to where he was. So whenever you have a client who have FAQ on subdomain, a blog on subdomain, news on subdomain, anything on subdomain with very little number of exception, always move this into subfolder or if you are, uh, if you want to go like completely like a, a mat even to the root folder. There is only one client I decided to go all the way around. She had uh, booking, uh, she had a booking for kids, uh, like daily activities, and now website was on WordPress, and this booking engine was like highly modified WooCommerce. When I have a word highly modified and WooCommerce in the one sentence, then I'm just freaking out. And that was always crashing. So I was like, listen, let's create a duplicate of the WordPress, and that will be on a subdomain, that will be on a booking engine. If that will crash, we will not get conversions, but your SEO will not be affected. So we decided to split this. But most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm moving everything into one domain. So the results, so I just wanted to get back to this customer that moved uh, that subfolder, subdomain to subfolder and take a look. That's him and his competitors. And that's him after migration. And I really want to see the competitors who are like, whoa, what, what's going on here? Why we are like, call me. So. <laughs> So thank you very, very much for being, having me for a fifth time. My name is Lukas Zelezny, and let's catch up on LinkedIn. <laughs>